Welcome to the worship service of the Presbyterian Church of Milford. As always, worship begins as the prelude begins. Join me in our call to worship. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep the decrees of the Lord and walk in God's ways. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. Let, Let us worship, worship God. God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. God of compassion, have mercy upon us. You have given us statutes, but we follow our own desires. We know of your laws, yet we try to justify our own way. You desire obedience, we practice rebellion. You offer blessing, we search for scapegoats. Make us mindful of how we disorder our intentions. Set us aright in accord with your design for us. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Let us pray. Eternal God, from whom all goodness flows, we give thanks for your Jesus Christ, who opens for us the gates to eternity. By your Holy Spirit, lift us high above the cares that weigh upon us. Let our spirits soar on the clouds of your merciful redemption, so that we may catch sight of your dominion and glory. Teach us your perfect will and guide us in the path of righteousness. Speak peace to our restless minds so that your ways become our ways and Christ calls our fervent desire. You are present everywhere, in countryside and in city streets, in family and in solitude. 
be assigned for us as we seek to follow you. Help us to move beyond the convenient boundaries of our lives and touch the lives of others. Let us sing the glad song that Jesus has come to heal every human hurt. Grant that we may live, move, and have our being in constant awareness of your grace and blessing. As we traverse the hours you give us daily, grace our footsteps that they may follow those of Christ. When the sunlight fades and our bodies grow weary, let all we have been and done throughout the day serve as our prayer of thanks. And we ask all this with the prayer your son taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First scripture today comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 12, to 12 through 20, and then 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 9. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. You see, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious loving God, may the words, my mouth, and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to start right off and say, we are nothing. We are nothing without God. That is the short and the long of it. We have been commanded to live by the commandments that God has given us. You know those ten little rules? You should have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I am a jealous God. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, wife, male servants, his ox, donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. If we keep these ten, ten little rules in our hearts, then working together becomes second nature because that is what God's commandments are telling us to do. Paul is now writing to Corinth because of their disunity with each other. There are some that are spiritual people, those who have mature understanding of the gospel, and there are the people of the flesh, those who are attached to worldly wisdom and values. It's so hard for us sometimes to distinguish between the two. In today's scripture, Paul is trying to get the Corinthians to become a team. A team that works effectively for building the kingdom of God. They were gifted people. In fact, they didn't fall short in any gift, but they just hadn't learned how to best use their gifts and abilities for the good of all. I want to say that again. They didn't fall short in any gift, but they just hadn't learned how to best use their gifts and abilities for the good of all, not just themselves. And there are your first teachings of the trickle-down economics. If you make a lot of money, then it will trickle down to those in need. But what really happens is a very small portion gets to the lesser of these, and the pockets of the line are lined to the wealthy. Now, these words may sound a bit harsh, I get that, but this is reality. If every person put their neighbor and community needs at the forefront, then you still may have differing degrees of income and gifts, but all would be taken care of. Everyone would be taken care of. There would be no more hungry. There would be no need for the food pantries around our country. There would be no people who live in poverty or those who may not even be counted anymore because they have fallen through the cracks and live under a bridge. Now many believers today prefer not to be part of a team. And I get that sometimes. I'm not a big team player necessarily, especially when I was in high school or in college. They say, people will say, I'm just not a team player. And there could be a lot of reasons for this. You might just enjoy working on a project from start to finish. You may think that this is the work, if I work with others, then my ideas will be lost. And it may affect me instead of help me. You might be a creative person who gets satisfaction out of seeing one part unfold and then move on to the next. And that's all okay. But on the other hand, many things in the work of God are just too big for a person to do alone. The resources are not there for an individual to make the necessary impact. However, many people stay away from joining a team effort 
because of negative experience in the past or they are just too scared to make a stand. Paul's examples of people in the Corinthian church could be similar to what we may have experienced or experiencing. You may have been on the committee or in a club where personalities clashed and you said, if I ever get off this committee, I'm never joining another one. Been there, done that. Let somebody else do it. Too often, we prefer just to do it alone in order to avoid differing opinions and conflict. To avoid people who want to be self-important and prideful. To not have to deal with people who seem to know it all and are insensitive towards others on a team. We may feel ignored or unappreciated. Sometimes we just don't like the work we're assigned to do on the team. And we're not willing to do it. Why is teamwork needed, you might be asking yourself at this point. Why do I have to be part of a team? Now, we have already mentioned that individual resources are not enough, but cooperative efforts over time generally result in achievements far greater than what any individual could do in isolation. Just look at our country, where we are today. Look at what Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey have done during this pandemic that we're going through. These three states, and I'm going to include Pennsylvania in that too. These four states worked together and they got results. While other states laughed at, mocked, and criticized us for our extreme measures to stop the spread. And look at our country today. Paul emphasized cooperation towards mutual goals. And later in the chapter, he refers to teamwork in building a structure. He says, I laid the foundation and someone else is building on it. The cooperative efforts continues for years to come and we all have to stick together. We all have to stick together in order to realize the finished product. We have to look for ways we can help one another to use our gifts and make room for the, the new kid on the block, if you will. Make room to help newcomers gain experience and expertise as they join the team. Stick together in building one another up rather than tearing down and crowding them off the team. Now, sometimes God has a difficult time helping us with teamwork because we, we have a hard time sticking together as a team. Sometimes we want things to move faster. So we take shortcuts. If there's one thing I learned is God does not take shortcuts. God's work involves many different individuals with a variety of gifts and abilities. There are no superstars in this task, only team members performing their own special roles. We can't have everybody leading the team. Somebody has that gift to lead. Somebody has the gift to take notes. Somebody has other gifts to see things through. We can become useful members of God's team by setting aside our desire to receive glory and praise for what we do. It's about time we say it's not about us anymore. People say, if I am not recognized or appreciated, I just won't do anything. Paul was saying to the people at Corinth, when you are on God's team, don't seek the praise that comes from people. It is comparatively worthless. Instead, seek the approval of God. Again, I'm going to say that. Seek the approval of God. Paul told them that as long as they grabbed at what made them look important, that that was a sign of a baby Christian. 
He said we are all servants of God. It is God who makes things grow, not we ourselves. Paul is telling the Corinthians, as well as us today, each of us will be rewarded according to his own labor. Do your work faithfully as a part of God's team. He knows and sees what you were doing. Our work is a cooperative effort, but individually each person, each person will receive their own reward. When you have a tendency, tendency to become discouraged, keep your eyes on the overall plan, not the individual bits and pieces. In the work of God, there are inequities too. Some make a greater commitment than others. There are things that no doubt irritate us. We're human. But we've got to look at the big picture. We have to look at God's plan. When we do our work faithfully as part of God's team, we will one day, one day hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Remember, we need to be willing to serve wherever God wants us. Teamwork multiplies our individual efforts. We can become a useful member of God's team by realizing, by realizing that God who brings about the results, and it is God who gets the glory. Amen. Join me in professing what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious loving God, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. We give you thanks for the opportunity to worship you, for our loving congregation, and all those worshiping with us today. Heavenly Father, we ask that your peace, which is beyond our understanding, guide our hearts and minds. We know that your peace is not just a river to jump into when things get tough, but rather it is our inner strength that we draw on while we wait to join you in heaven. When we have peace in our hearts, we have peace in our lives. Help us share that peace with others, not by judging them, as we don't know their pain or their battle they might be fighting internally. Please help us see the bigger picture, not just how the pandemic has affected us personally, but how it has affected all those around us. Those who have lost their businesses, those who have lost their jobs and can't pay their rent or mortgage, those who can't put food on their table, those who have lost loved ones, those who can't see their children or relatives because of travel restrictions. Those who are lucky enough to work but are in difficult positions seem to get beat up on every day. Please help us to choose patience and kindness and understanding rather than allow anger and frustration to take over. Please don't let the behavior of others destroy our inner being. Please help us to go, let go of the things we can't control. We can't control what others do. We can't control how, COVID, how long COVID will last. We can't control fake news. We can't control the motives of others. But we can control our own physical distancing. We can turn off the news. We can limit how much time we spend on social media. We can control our attitudes and we can lead by example. If we want others to treat us with kindness and patience, if we want peace in our world, we must practice peace in our daily lives. Change begins with each and every one of us, each and every day. Heavenly Father, help us to look at one another as if we were all brothers and sisters or dear friends. Friends are our chosen family, and family is one of the most awesome treasures we have in this world. Think of how wonderful things would be if we treated each other like family rather than just some stranger we meet on the street. Help us to practice a little more kindness each day holding doors for people or saying a quick hello as we pass on the street. Each and every act of kindness and love makes a ripple in this world. Father, help us to understand that one simple act of kindness could be the difference between someone having a very bad day or an absolutely wonderful day. Gracious loving God, help us to choose joys in our lives because when we feel good, we do good. And when we do good, it reminds others what joy feels like and it might just inspire them to do the same. Father God, help us to fully grasp that life is made up of days, and each day is an opportunity to say something kind and genuine, to make something more beautiful, to be creative, to dance like no one is watching or sing like no one is listening, to love and be loved. Help us to be the person that brightens a room when we walk in, not when we leave. Father, help us be that person who ask someone if they're okay a second time when they say they are, but you just know they're not. Help us be the person who smiles back at others who don't smile. Help us be the kind of person we wish for when no one was there for us in our time of need. As the Bible says, a glad heart makes a happy face, a broken heart crushes the spirit. For the happy heart, life is like a feast every day. Gracious loving God, thank you for giving us life and happiness, for guiding us in the right path of peace and salvation. Thank you for all your blessings to us and our families and for the strength you give us each day. Heavenly Father, we ask for all those who have, you have brought into our lives to lead us and to guide us and to protect us and those who positively influence decisions we make in our lives and for all those around us who make life more meaningful. You, Father God, create the path for all. Help us to hear your voice and follow you. 
Help us to focus our minds and cast our cares on you as you comfort us. Father, you are the source of all comfort. Please give us courage and strength we need and fill us with your peace and love. Let us follow you wholeheartedly and let our minds be renewed and refreshed. And we ask this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. as we leave our living rooms or our offices, wherever we're watching this service today. Be part of God's team, because only God can make things grow, not we ourselves. And may the shalom of God, the love and compassion of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.